So far, we learned about raised buttons and flat buttons. In this lecture, we are going to teach you how to create a floating action button and change its apparent features. To create a floating action button, we must first add the design library to our project. To do this, go to the file menu and select project structure. In the modules section, select app and then go to the dependencies section. Using the plus option, library dependency, I select the design library and I click OK. Now I wait until Android Studio compiles my project and adds the design library to the project. OK, the Gradle operations finished successfully and the design library was added to the project. I go to the resource section and inside the layout folder, I open the activity main layout. Inside the layout folder, I'm going to define a floating action button. I type android.support.design dot widget dot floating action button. Our floating action button requires a height and a width. I set its height and width to wrap content. After height and width, I'm going to define an ID for my floating action button. At sign plus ID slash fab underscore btn. Fab is short for floating action button. For now, let's take a look at the app on emulator. Alright, our application was launched on the emulator. As you can see, now we have a floating action button located below the toolbar. Ok, let's work with the apparent features of our floating action button. I stop the emulator. After ID, I'm going to place my floating action button down at the bottom of the layout. So I type Android colon layout underscore align parent button and I set its value to true. Yes, you can see that our floating action button is now placed at the bottom of the layout. Now I want to move my floating action button to the right. I type Android colon align parent right and I set its value to true. Also, I type Android colon align parent end and I set this attribute to true as well. You can see that our floating action button is now placed at the bottom right side of the layout. Now I add a margin to my floating action button to give it some space off the sides. For example, 16dp will do it.
Ok, that's it for the margin. Now I'm going to select an icon for my floating action button. So I go to materialdesignicons.com From this website, I'm going to find and download an icon. I type email I select for example this email icon Advanced export, size 24, color white and I click on the icon button to start downloading it Alright, the icon was downloaded I go to downloads where the new icon has been saved I copy my icon In Android Studio, I'm going to paste the icon inside the drawable folder I also rename it to email And here's the icon I return to my activity main layout and after the margin attribute I type Android colon SRC I reference the icon that I have pasted inside the drawable folder at sign drawable slash email As you can see, the email icon was placed inside our floating action button. After the Android source attribute, I'm going to set the size of my floating action button. I type app colon, I hit alt and enter to import app to my layout, control and space, and from this list, I select Fab Size. Again, I press Ctrl and Space, and from this list, I can select the size of my floating action button. The first option is Auto, meaning automatic, and the second one is Mini, and the third is Normal. I set the size of my floating action button to normal. So far, we selected an icon for our floating action button and also set its size to normal. The next attribute I'm going to discuss is elevation. I type App colon elevation. The default value for this attribute is 8 dp. The bigger this number, the bigger the shadow under the floating action button. For example, I set it to 24, and as you can see, the shadow under the floating action button is multiplied. I set it to 8 dp, which is also the default value as well. Of course, you can increase this number if you want to. The last attribute I'm going to define for my floating action button is background tint. I type app colon background tint. Using this attribute, I can change the color of my floating action button. By default, the floating action button's color follows color accent. If I don't want my floating action button's color to follow color accent, I can manually create a color for it. So, I go to the values folder 
and open colors.xml. I create a new color. I open a color tag and type color fab and I close the color. For its value, I go to material colors and I select for example, violet. I copy the color code for A200. I return to Android Studio and paste the code inside the color fab tag. I close colors.xml and I return to the activity main layout. Now I must reference the color that I have defined inside colors.xml. So I type at sign color slash color fab. As you can see, the color of our floating action button changed to violet. So far, we learned about floating action button and its attributes. At the end of this lecture, I'm going to define a functionality for my floating action button. I close the activity main layout and open the main activity class. Inside the main activity class, I create an object from the floating action button class. So I type floating action button, I name my object fab and semicolon. Inside the uncreate method and after flat button, I'm going to get the reference for the new object fab equals, I use casting for floating action button type, find view by id, r.id, dot, fab underscore btn, and semicolon. As for normal buttons, I'm going to define a set on click listener method for my fab object fab dot set on click listener inside the parentheses I type new on click listener you can see that the on click method was created once we click on our floating action button the code inside this method will be executed Okay, depending on your project, you can enter your desired code and statements inside the onclick method. In order to verify that the onclick method is working, I'm going to use a toast message. Toast.makeText, inside the parentheses, I use getApplicationContext. The next argument is my toast text, for which I type floating action button, and for the duration I type length short. And finally, I end the toast statement with dot show. Now if I run my project on emulator, a toast message with this text 
must be displayed as soon as I click the floating action button. I run the project on emulator. and the application was run successfully. As you can see, we have a floating action button at the lower right side of the layout. So, we changed our floating action button's color to violet and set an icon for it. Also, set its size to normal and define an unclick listener for it. Now if I click on the floating action button, the code inside the unclick method must be executed and the toast message that I created must be displayed. I click on the floating action button and as we expected, the toast message is displayed. This shows that the code inside the unclick method has been executed. You can also enter your desired code and statements inside the unclick method. And that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will create a key for our button project and also get an output file from it.